Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel Rosal Plus here on YouTube. This is Daniel Rosal and as I mentioned in my last video, this is my new-ish YouTube channel where I am uh, putting all the uh, massive topics that uh, do not have a better home or I should say a home on my main YouTube channel, which I'm trying to curate, cultivate around uh, a couple of themes related to uh, where I live, mostly where I live. Uh, so if you've found this video through, through subscribing, thanks for continuing with the uh, was the inundating, indulating wave of topics. If it's your first time, uh, thanks for clicking on the video. Now, before I get going, I just want to say this is one of my mental health related videos, and therefore I make the disclaimer. I certainly legally, I probably legally have to make it. I certainly morally have to make it that I'm not a doctor, and therefore this video should not be construed as offering medical advice. Rather, I am somebody taking medication. And I would not be uploading these videos to YouTube if I didn't uh, think there was value in even patients talking about their medications and their understanding of medications. Because personally, I watch a lot of videos like this myself on YouTube and I find it very empowering, encouraging when I hear from other folks who are taking medication and even if their explanations are you know, imperfect so long as they're not like blanket misinformation, I think it uh, generally can be helpful. So I wanted to talk today about vortioxetine and uh, specifically answer a very basic question from my understanding for other folks taking this med, which is, well, what is so exciting or different about vortioxetine that makes it different than a SSRI medication? Do you ever wonder who comes up with the names for these things? I mean, not just the chemicals like vortioxetine, the brand names Trintelix, Brintelix. I'm not exactly sure what it sounds like other than something a little bit weird. But then again, maybe Lexapro or Prozac are also not the, not the, not the most straightforward names. This is what it is. Now, it's, it's often more helpful to know the chemical name of your medication. In this, in this case, it's vortioxetine because trade names, which is what Brintelix and Trintelix are, uh, tend to change by country, particularly as, med as medications get more popular. Uh, but the chemical name is the same. That is a molecule, and this is what different manufacturers who have patented it or got the patent are going to choose to call it. Uh, so it's called by both those names, and it's a pretty new uh, new drug. That's the first thing to say about it. From what I could read, from what I could get from Google, vortioxetine was uh, FDA approved in 2013. Now you might say, well, isn't it 2023, like 10 years isn't exactly cutting edge? And uh, yes, uh, that is the that is the year, unless, I've, unless I really need more help than I realize, uh, this is 2023. But compared to some of the SSRIs, that's actually quite new. If you think about uh, Prozac, if I'm not mistaken about this also, actually came on the market just about when I was born in 1989. So Prozac from the 80s, the tricyclic, uh, for those other depression warriors watching this video might have experienced with the tricyclics uh, or even the MAIOs, really, really old drugs going back to the 1960s and before. Uh, so compared to those drugs, Vortioxetine is sort of the new kid on the block-ish. Uh, there is newer kids on the block, but 2013, 10 years of clinical application still makes it pretty new. My question, so just to talk for a second about how I got onto vortioxetine, I have anxiety and depression. I think probably more depression than anxiety and particularly sort of depression characterized by sometimes when I am depressed, difficulty with concentration, mood, energy, motivation, certainly self-esteem. I've done Lexapro, I've taken Lexapro for uh, almost a year, found it very helpful, but did find there were side effects, particularly uh, sexual side effects. Tried Wellbutrin next and also actually tried it twice. And my experience with Wellbutrin was one of, it was the closest thing I found to being a, the, the perfect drug. But for me, the anxiety was brutal, uh, absolutely brutal. So I unfortunately had to uh, give up on Wellbutrin twice. When I kind of came to my doctor, I was like, sorry, Wellbutrin definitely does not work. I'm not taking this. We've done Lexapro. Uh, what, is there anything? I mean, I mean I'm like waiting for the guy to just kind of like hold his head, put his hands being like this guy. Uh, but I think as a psych, as a patient with depression, even if you feel like the doctor is like despairing at how many drugs you're trying, probably pretty common. 
uh it's a trial and error process he was like well i think actually because you know you you told me you had like sexual side effects uh what about uh let's try and you've already come off lexapro which is it's kind of a pain in the ass why don't we try something different how about vortioxetine and my first my first question is what what's what's what is vortio what is this chemical how is it different so basically the a link to a video from a psychiatrist psycho uh, psychopharmacologist who really does the detail but basically here is the here is the skinny on it vortioxetine is is in the smaller class of medications called serotonin modulators the class of medications that most patients are familiar with for when you think of antidepressants is SSRIs, SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. What's the difference between a SSRI and a serotonin modulator? So the answer from what I understand, and I'm pretty sure this is, the, if, if I go into the details, I'll risk getting stuff wrong. So I'm not going to give the details so that I at least know that the information I'm presenting is, is, is pretty good. SSRIs uh, work on a protein called SIRT, the serotonin transporter, which brings and they prevent the reuptake of serotonin in your uh, in your brain in the uh, synapses in your brain, and that increases serotonin levels and sort of has these downstream effects. And that's really important to understand is that the bulk of scientific research in recent years has indicated that the therapeutic benefit of SSRIs doesn't come simply because they increase serotonin. It's something else, other changes that happen in the brain in the brain related to. Uh, neuroplasticity so trintalix or brintalix all has that mechanism going going on it has the ssri mechanism of uh cert uh serotonin reuptake inhibition by working on cert but it has additional effects now you'll see these called as novel mechanisms of action or augmentative mechanisms of action and those mechanisms are action of are basically it's agonism or partial agonism a different serotonin receptors. We don't just have one type of serotonin receptor in our brain and not just in our brain and our body. We have different types of serotonin receptors and different serotonin receptors are associated with different side effects. So the novelty, if you will, about 40 oxetine over an SSRI is that it is a selective serotonin reuptake, reuptake inhibitor. In other words, it works through that mechanism uh, working on search, I was specifically serotonin reuptake inhibition, which is the classic SSRI mechanism that doctors know works for depression and for anxiety. And it also has additional effects by agonizing different serotonin receptors. So it's kind of a multi mechanism drug. And that is the reason that rather than being bucketed in with the SSRIs, it's in its own class of. Uh, medications now i've seen them called serotonin modulators and but i've seen a few other less common words like serotonin augmentative agents or uh serotonin so i already said modulators anyway there's a couple of other terminologies you'll come about i've also seen an inconsistency in trying to research this myself as a patient there's a there's a good uh, ask psychiatry forum on reddit and i ask uh, it's a very interesting online community because real psychiatrists are the respondents it's moderated like that and i ask can you explain as a patient what's the difference between an ssri and a serotonin modulator of vortioxetine and they said well yeah, it's serotonin plus, it's this SSRI plus all these different effects. We don't know the extent, and this is actually written on the Trintalix website, the extent to which the additional mechanisms contribute to its therapeutic effect is unclear. But theoretically, this is what the uh, people said on that forum, because of these additional mechanisms of hitting these different receptors, it has a little bit of an effect on dopamine, norepinephrine, glutamate, different serotonin, uh, diff different neurotransmitter systems. So it can be sort of thought of as a SSRI with a little bit of uh, dopamine, norepinephrine, something maybe like, a, not, not like an SDNRI because it doesn't work on these additional systems through reuptake in inhibition, but uh, has hits a wider range of neurotransmitter systems 
than just the serotonin system because it's got this kind of now i did i did mention that if i went attempted to go into the detail i would risk spreading misinformation which i don't want to do so that's as much as i know just to wheel back for a second vortioxetine trade name sprintalex trintalex it's a serotonin modulator which is distinguished from the older more established class of serotonin modulating medicines called the SSRIs because of its mechanism of action it has the uh, it has serotonin reuptake inhibition the classic mechanism of action but it also has additional mechanisms of action through uh, targeting agonizing um, different uh, serotonin uh, receptors in the brain and that makes a kind of a two-in-one work on the serotonin system which potentially has better efficacy and potentially also means that it has less of the adverse side effects most associated with SSRIs classically the sexual dysfunction and uh, that is from what I've read a very common reason why people like me get on this medication it's they found SSRIs good but the sexual dysfunction is kind of a, a deal breaker and then you know doctors have to go down the route of do we need to add medications onto the SSRI or for me as a patient I'd much much rather take one pill um, that doesn't cause sexual side effects then go down the route of taking one pill for my depression you know maybe it may be Lexapro and then taking Wellbutrin because of the sexual problems uh, and I think probably 99% of patients would feel like me we'd rather just take one one medicine that doesn't cause problems in the start right 100% so I hope that was useful that's my understanding of it if you're uh, if you're taking these drugs if you are in a position of greater knowledge than me i.e you're a psychiatrist nurse practitioner medical professional of some kind and uh, you want to correct or add something I said that would be amazing and uh, thanks for watching the video and good luck with your uh, treatment on this medication if this is what you are taking.